Yo, what it is, what it was, what it finna be. You already know what time it is, and if you don't know, you about to find out. Money, money, yeah, yeah. Money, money, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am joined here by the one and only, my man, straight out of LAX. JTG, what's going on, man? Jay the God, yes, I'm in the building. How you doing, man? Man, I appreciate you joining us, man. No, thanks for having me. You know, this is th this man is one half of Team Sexy AF, <laughs> <laughs> AKA <laughs> one half of the one of the most memorable groups of all time, one of the most memorable tag teams of all time. Thank you, thank you. Crime time, man. Right Look, here. Oh, I see the shirt. Styling on him. Man, that, that's, a, that's a dope shirt, man. I'll make sure to get you. that shirt right now at ProWrestlingTees.com. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? She'll be, she'll be a chef for the promo, you know what I mean? Uh, but let's get right into it, man. You know, uh, how have you been, man? How's everything been? I've been up? good. I've been good. 2020 has been a rough year, Super. but, uh, you know, as we get getting close to 2021 and, you know, things are looking up. Things are looking good. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, obviously, you you know, I don't, I don't want to go around it. You know, obviously, 2020 has been extremely crazy. Uh, I want to kind of rewind. Uh -huh. Top of the year, uh, Kobe Bryant passes away. Yep. Uh, and you know, obviously that was devastating. Uh, Especially living in LA, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah they yeah, still yeah. feeling it, you know. <laughs> yeah. But the uh, winning the NBA Finals that that helped the city a lot. Shout out to the Lakers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the Lakers. Uh, no, but uh, you know when that happened, you you actually got a text message that day, didn't you? Yeah, I got one from uh, not only just not not just my tag team partner, not just my best friend. I, that's like my brother, big brother. And, um, you know, he sent out a text message. I don't know what made him send that out, but he did. And it was like, yo, if anything it was ever happened to me, you know, I love you in this life and beyond. Mm. And I, was, I didn't really, like, Shad does stuff like that every now and then when he gets in his feelings, you know, so I didn't really take it, you know, too seriously. Like, yeah, I love you too, man, whatever. <laughs> um, but um, a few months later, that, that text message, that, that text message meant, meant a lot. Yeah, you know, and... Um you know, Shad, um, he, you know, obviously this is a really moving story, you know, in, in March of this past year, right? Mm -hmm. Um, May national news, you know, uh, he, he, um, you know, he passed, you know, and in, in, in the, in the way that he passed, you know, saving his son, yeah, um, risking his life going out like a hero. He was, out, man, he was <laughs> absolutely a hero, man. And, um, you know, it, for me, I was very moved by the story. Uh -huh. It was almost to the point where I couldn't sleep. Uh -huh. You know, I was just so invested. I was reading, and it was so hard. You know, obviously a lifelong pro wrestling fan. You know, I, I'm seeing this unfold. I couldn't imagine how it was for you, someone that's traveled with him, someone that's been side by side with him, and, and someone that's synonymous with him. You know, yeah, uh, when you think JTG, you think Shad. When you think Shad, you think JTG. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so I mean, I, I have to ask, like, how have you been holding up? since you know his passing you know and um yeah like how have you well, been the, the emotionally first few broke? months was really rough you know i would uh had a hard time sleeping sometimes uh waking up and hoping it's all a a, a dream and then you have to accept reality like man you gotta do this all over again the first couple of months were, were, were really rough um but you know time time heals i'm doing a lot better now i'm in a better better place um and same thing with his family, you know, they, they had, a, you know, his son, you know, his son especially and his, uh, his wife. But, you know, I, I keep in contact with them and everybody's doing, you know, move along in their own pace. I don't want to ask too much questions, obviously, because it's a really no, it's a personal good. subject. But I just kind of want to rewind. Where were you at when you found out that it, this was unfolding? You it know? was crazy. I was actually, it was a Sunday night. I was getting ready to go to bed. And um, his wife called me from his phone. And like, um, hi, Jason, we had an incident earlier. Can you help me? Um, can you come down to the beach and help me look for Shad? And I'm like, I'm thinking it's a joke because me and Shad, we, yeah. we're good for playing ribs on each other, just joking around. And, you know, sometimes we get really elaborate and, you know, we, we want to prank each other. But um, for some reason, I was like, I'll, I'll just go along with it. Like, all right, I'll help you come look for Shad. Like, how could you be missing Shad? He's like six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, almost 300 pounds, but um, uh, I got ready and I drove over to his, drove over to his uh, apartment and his wife and son um, were, they said, wait for me, I'm in the parking lot. And I went to go get some flashlights. And that kind of like threw me back, like flashlights, like why are we getting flashlights to look, look, for, uh, look for Shad? 
and then um, his son was in the car, and when I got in the car, she was like, I can't tell you now, because, you know, a riot, you know, his son is a riot right there. And then I was really getting, like, okay, I'm getting concerned, I'm getting yeah. worried. And then, uh, like, when we got out the car, and Araya was, his son was walking a little bit up front, and then she told me what happened. And from, from what I heard, I'm like, I don't know, this is not looking good at all. It was like, yeah. you know, he never came back from, you know, a wave, a big wave came from over top, and she never saw him after that. And I'm like, you think, like, she thinking, you know, she, you know, that's his wife, she's gonna, you know, keep, yeah. um, she's gonna stay positive. But, you know, for me, it was like, um, it's, it's not looking good at all. So I kind of accepted it that night. Mm. You know, we were there till, we, I got there like around eight-ish, nine, I can't remember, it was around eight, nine o'clock, but we were on the beach till midnight looking. And I don't know what I was looking for. I don't know if I was looking for him on the broadwalk and like walking on the beach, like he's, or if I was looking in the ocean if I, for a body. I didn't want to ask. I was just there for, for support. You know, um, you mentioned the word hero, yeah. you know, and, and for the record, for those that may not know, this wasn't the first act of heroism that he, he displayed. You know, there was a video that circulated of him, I think, where, which was like at a convenience store. At a gas station, yeah. Somebody was going to rob the gas station. Yeah, and, right after the show. I remember because it, it was on my birthday. We had just had a show. And he was, before we went to the hotel, he liked to like get like a bunch of snacks and <laughs> juices and water. And I stayed in the car. I didn't feel like leaving the car. I was tired. We just had a show. And then uh, I see Shad throwing out somebody and pinning him down on the ground. And he's like, call the cops, call the cops. I'm like, what is Shad? Like, oh, I automatically thought it was Shad's <laughs> fault. Like, like, what does Shad do? Like, <laughs> what are you doing? And then um, I saw him kick a gun towards me. And I'm like, oh, snap. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then the driver who was, he called the cops and the cops came and Chad held them there till the cops came and then we had to stay there for an extra hour to do the, to do the police report. I'm like, I'm trying to get to the hotel. <laughs> hotel. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Chad and his, uh, his super, the Superman, <laughs> superhero Yo, but antics. That, that, that speaks to his character. And, you know, I, I don't want this to be, you know, somber or sad. Uh -huh. You know, I want to celebrate. The His legacy, life, yeah. The legacy There's of plenty Shad. of more superhero stories uh, Shad Shad has. We don't even talk about. Like, I remember one time we were at a club in, uh, I believe it was Boise, Idaho, and some guy was like yelling at his girlfriend or something like that. It looked like it was about to get physical. Shad stepped in and picked him up and threw him on the ground. Like, don't put your hand on a woman. What's wrong with wow. you? Blah uh, blah. And everyone was just like, oh wow. And we didn't, and they were like, some football players, because we were, <laughs> you know, like, you thought we were football players. Some football players tackle some guy. Cops came, we explained to, to them what happened. Uh, yeah, Shad always, yeah, that was, that was just that's, Shad's that's thing. That's who he was, yeah. yeah. So I, I guess here's kind of one thing that I wanted to touch on, because obviously when this happened, it, you know, it, it moved everybody, not yeah. just the pro wrestling community, it moved everybody, but, you know, there was an outpouring amount of support from everybody that came in. Yeah. You know, there was people that were making big donations on the GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, people thought that John Cena made a big donation. I believe it was John Cena. It had to be. <laughs> yeah. like, you, you don't put a, make that big of a donation and then put CTC. It was like, okay. You know. Well, shout out to uh, to John Cena. <laughs> yeah, shout I, out to, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> that was dope. That was really dope for John Cena to do that. Uh, but... When you start seeing all the support, uh, you know, you start seeing these these fans clamoring mm. for, you know, him to be celebrated. Yeah. One of the things that I, I was, you know, observing was that the WWE, obviously you guys made, you know, your name in the WWE mm -hmm. in the group Crime Time, which we'll get to in a second. Yeah, yeah. You know, cause That's I, home. That's home. Because yeah. I still want to get, I want to get <laughs> to what JTG got stuck. So, just, but as far as, <laughs> as far as uh, Shad. Yeah. You know, fans, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the WWE having this Hall of Fame ceremony and they have this thing called the Warrior Award. Yes. Where they celebrate um, essentially, hero, you know, heroes and, you know, stuff of that, you know. That yeah. Ilk. So a lot of people said that, you know, Shad deserves that. Yes. So I, that I, I you definitely say that. agree. Definitely agree with that. And it would have been great if, if they were still holding uh, WrestleMania in the ceremony in Los Angeles, because a lot of his family yeah. will be able to attend, especially I would love for his son and his uh, son to be there. 
a home for Woody Hicks if, he, if they ever was to do that. But um, yeah, hopefully if it's still in Los Angeles, Shad was, would be um, will be a nominee. That's what they would call it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> will be will, will get the award, and um, it will be great because he has a lot of friends and family in um, Los Angeles. You know, we would uh, Shad was well known in Gold's Gym, the uh, in Venice, I the see Mecca. That. I saw that. Um, they had a. a what do you call it? A, uh, like a memorial, a right memorial there, there yeah. for him, and everybody knew Shad, and he had people, grown men crying in that parking lot. You know, Shad touched a lot of people. So, with that being said, everybody that's watching, make sure that we petition for this to happen because it <laughs> absolutely has to happen. It's well deserved, and I honestly feel that uh, there's nobody better for that award than, yeah. than Shad. You know, so um, crime time. Let's let's rewind. <laughs> Throwback. Throwback. You know, what I'm saying crime time. Uh, how did it come together, man? How did this happen? You know, how were you and him? Because, you know, you were telling me on the way over here that uh, both of y'all guys are originally from Brooklyn. Yeah. But, but y'all didn't actually know each other. No, we met in Louisville, Kentucky at OVW. Um, I was doing my own thing and he was doing his own thing. It's not till maybe two, but we were always cool. We were like really yeah. cool. Me and him were tight. He, he was always considered my big brother. He helped me out in so many different ways. I can't even, he was, he was my... Man, when I first moved to uh, Louisville, Kentucky, he helped me get my first apartment. Um, you know, he, he was working at a bar. Uh, he was like doing security. You know, he, yeah. you know, he gave me his uh, his uh, his ID. I wasn't 21 yet, so you know, he you know, he did me the, the big brother thing. I like, hold my ID down, make sure no one take it, and I was able to get into the clubs. Um, and he brought me around the locker room. You know, when you first get there. Uh, especially me, I didn't know anybody there. You know, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Louisville, Kentucky is like, I was like a whole brand new world for me. And um, and he was like, yo, this is my little brother right here. You know, he, you know. so I had that Chad clout. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't mess with him. You know, don't pick on him. You know, because usually when you enter into the wrestling locker room, they're going to they gonna test you. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're definitely But I had that Chad clout. He, he, you know, he looked out for me. So whenever you guys are there in Louisville, Kentucky, two guys from Brooklyn, man, yeah. I had that meet there. How do they put you guys together? How do they say you guys are now a tag team? And then how does it evolve to becoming crime time, which is what everybody knows you guys by? So it, I came up with the, me and my, uh, I, had, I had a tag team partner before Shad. He actually came up with the look. You know, he, he hit me up and we had, a, he, he was having amateur shows. We were in amateur class. Shad was already on TV. He was on local TV. He made a name for himself. And um, my tag, you, know, you might know him, Abraham Washington. I'm not as familiar, but... Abraham, he was on ECW. Um, he hit me up and was like, yo, man, we, we need to have a look, man. You can't be just coming out there in tights. You know, we got... You, you from Brooklyn, I'm from the Dirty South. I'm going to represent the South. You represent the East Coast. You rock your Tims and <laughs> 50 Cent is popping right now. Get the bulletproof vest and the chains and the grill. And I'm like, man, that sounds too stereotypical. I want to be a wrestler. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of Chris Benoit. You know, I want to be a technical wrestler. He's like, that ain't going to make me no money, man. You a, you a, you a brother, man. You yeah. <laughs> get the time. So I gave it a shot and we blew the roof off um, at the amateur show. So that's, like, that look stuck with me. You know, and then he started having personal issues, so he had to stop wrestling for a while. And then, you know, Danny Davis, the owner of OVW, and Al Snow and Paul Heyman, they were like, this, guy, this kid here is very talented. He was talking, referring to me. Um, he's very talented. He's young. Let's do something for him, man. Let's, you know, let's put him with Shad. You know, just make him a tag team. You know, they, they get along great. And they asked Shad about it. Like, Shad, me and Shad already had a great relationship. He's like, yeah, yeah, we, let's do it. And we hit, me and him had great chemistry, and then from there, it's been. Yo, see, that's it, that's crazy great. to me because <laughs> as soon as I saw you guys on TV, I feel like it looked like you really y'all had chemistry. Oh yeah, it yeah. looked like y'all y'all really came up together. Like mm -hmm. y'all really y'all knew each other. It just it just felt right. Yeah. And I agree though, it was a little stereotypical. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, me and the homies always like, yo, why they gotta why do they gotta do that? You know, yeah. but. Looking back on it, it was entertaining, though. It was and entertaining. It, it's very and, memorable. And we had instructions to be over the top. You know, we took stuff, elements from, from everything from, our, from what we, who we um, liked, from hip-hop. We took elements from TV shows you grew up with, like um, in Living Color, the Homeboy Shopping Network. Uh, <laughs> we, stole, we took a lot of stuff from that. We, took, uh, we came up with the Money, Money, Yeah, Yeah from Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac, yeah. yeah. from Players Club. Um, How High, we took some stuff from there too. Like, if you, I, I was watching actually in the barbershop today and I was watching How High, and I'm like, 
I could never slide today. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, different times, you get away with different stuff. Like, the social media, you def definitely never get away with the crime time gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> social media with Twitter. Y'all would have oh, been canceled, been canceled, the, been canceled oh, a long time ago. But I, I would say that as you were developing the characters, who were some of the hip-hop guys that influenced the character? Obviously, 50 Cent. 50 Cent with the bulletproof vest. The grill from Nelly, that was popping. Show me a grill, you know that song? Yes. Um, the pant leg up. Uh, that was from LL Cool J. Um, then I eventually got the glasses with the uh, with the yo-yos, and I got that from Soldier Boy. So yeah, I took a lot of elements from um, a lot of my favorite artists, and you got you got JTG. Before we go into more about Crime Time, who are some of your favorite artists that you listen to in terms of hip hop? Okay, right now, or like all time? No, like, just all time. Just all time. Whatever comes to mind. Big. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn, so big fan of Biggie. Um, grew up listening to Biggie. I still listen to Biggie. Fabulous. Big fan of. Uh, Fab and the punchlines, always uh, been a fan of mine. Uh, uh, T.I., love T.I., and who else, who else, and Drake. So when you're in the gym, who do you listen to? Like, who, who pumps you up? Oh, Drake, Lil Wayne, the baby's popping right now, feeling, the baby's good. I hate calling a grown man the baby, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> And my own theme song. Shoot. Yeah, listen to my theme song. I, 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 you heard my new theme song? I haven't heard the new oh, theme song. Oh, man, I have to play that back for you. you gonna hear, well, you definitely going to hear it tomorrow when, uh, I, when, I, when yeah, I'm coming definitely. through them curtains. Yo, shout out to <laughs> VIP Wrestling. Shout out to Lamont, a.k.a. Lou Gotti, man. You already know VIP Wrestling. Salute. Now, I will say this. I was expecting you to say Outcast because of the shirt. You know oh, yeah, you? I love Outcast, too. You yeah, yeah I definitely love Outcast, yeah. So let's go back to this crime time, right? Yeah. So you guys are on TV. You guys are popping. Um, you know, you guys are getting a lot of TV time, which I think people need to realize. Like, at that's that not, that's, yeah, that's hard. That's very yeah, we hard. We was getting a lot of heat. Uh, jealousy, we was getting a lot of, there was a lot of jealousy. Like, these guys, these guys just came, they're young, and they're getting all this TV time. And, and I didn't, I didn't know, I was young. I, I didn't know that it was like that, you know, yeah, precious. Yeah. But yeah, TV time is like, whew, if you get two minutes, you're lucky. <laughs> well, not only that, but you also had segments with Vince McMahon, mm -hmm. segments with John Cena. DX. Yeah, yeah, you had segments with, with DX. The, yeah, with the... With Booker T and Charmel and the coach. Yeah, we were, we were on a roll, yeah. Yeah, so... Definitely at, blessed. At what, at what point did, like, did you say, not so much that it ran its course, but where, where was it like, all right, you know, now it's time to part ways because towards the end of... Uh, Shad's run in WWE. Yeah. He ended up going solo, and yeah. then, you know, he ended up departing from the company. He stayed there a few years more. At yeah. what point did it just kind of run its course? It ran, it ran its course when, you know, I believe after WrestleMania, um, we were, like, one of the one of the top babyface tag teams, and we weren't, like, really, we weren't getting the recognition that we thought we, that we deserved. Like, they were just placing two single superstars together mm -hmm. to make a tag team and they were getting title shots and winning and we were like yo you know you have crime time here when we get we come out the curtains we get a reaction and um, we're not getting you know uh, just do you know we're not getting um you're not getting what we what we think we, that we deserve so we were like um, we, we thought you know we you know, we kind of like uh, talked about going solo, and then we were like, you know what, let's let's do that. Because I always had dreams and ambitions. You know, before I, everybody wants to be uh, a heavyweight champion, but I was a big fan of the Intercontinental title. I thought that was like the workhorse title. Like you yeah. really had to be really good to hold that title. So that, that's the what best I, wrestlers hold that title. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so for sure. So so whenever it, it, it runs its course, you know, you stayed a few years, you know, longer. Yeah. And then eventually you parted. When you look back at that point in your career, when you look back at the WWE, mm -hmm. you know, phase of what you guys did together, how how special is it to you now looking back on that time, you know? Um, when I first started, especially when I was 21, um, it was, what year was it, Ninth, uh, 2006, I had a blast. It was amazing. You know, it was brand new to me. Um, I'm living, uh, living my dream. Um, and then, you know, you start getting used to it. Yeah. Um, but as long as Shad and I were on TV and we were able to, uh, express our creativity and personality and, uh, and learn our craft, we were having a good time. It's only when you're, they shelf you, you're in the locker room, just eating catering is like, okay, anything for us? No, nothing. And, and that becomes a, a habit. And then you start getting frustrated because you know you're talented. You know that people want to see you. 
you know you have all this to give and they're not using you. Yeah. So that's when it gets a little frustrating. I have to ask, you know, it's just something that I've always wanted to know. Do you feel race ever played a part in the way that you guys were handled in terms of obviously from the from the gimmick, obviously, yeah, yeah. Maybe, you know, we it's kind of obvious that uh -huh. they were targeting a demographic, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? The urban demographic, yeah. as they like to call it. Uh, but, you know, did you ever feel like, did, I mean, even then, did you ever experience any form of just like blatant, not so much racism, but just mm -hmm. like, you know, being held back because of color? I, 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 absolutely, yeah. Um, and that's always been a thing in, 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 in the entertainment industry and in the wrestling industry. You know, race will always play... Um, Race, like for on the TV side, for the audience side, if you're black, Asian, if you're from England, they're gonna, they're gonna, that's what you are. Yeah. You're gonna blow it out of proportion. They gotta make it over the top, you know. Yeah. So I kind of, you're kind of going into the wrestling business. You kind of know that, you know, from past gimmicks and and and, and seeing different characters, you know, seeing their their um, culture being blown over the top. And I think that's why it was so meaningful to see whenever Kofi won the title. Yeah. That video that circulated of MVP and Shad, mm -hmm. tears in their eyes. Yeah. Because there had never been, you know, uh, uh, someone that was black that held the WWE championship. You know, yeah. that, that was. And who and identified as black. Yeah, yeah. that was African American. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, identified it because there's been a lot of. Uh, there's been, you know, there's been a lot of debates on social media. I read, I, I, I check them all out. You're like, The Rock was the first. Yeah, he, yeah, The Rock is black. Yeah. But at the time, he didn't like he identified more with the his Samoan Samoan side. For sure. Yeah. So you you depart from WWE. Mm -hmm. You start going indie. Yeah. And at what point did you and Shad reconnect and we start doing uh, Crime Time together again after? Because there was a period of time where y'all went a few years without doing it at all, right? Oh no! Right after I got released uh, from WWE, me and Shad, you know, we started doing indies together again. Well, I'm talking about the the, the, the time period from the time that he departed from WWE uh -huh. to when you went. There was like oh, a we was yeah, 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 yeah. He was um he he did a few shows on the indies there and there, here and there. Um, and I, I and I, I remained in WWE, but we were always Shad and I were like family, so we always yeah. kept in contact. So y'all went right back to it, Crime Time. Yeah, we went right back into it. as soon as I got uh, got released. Crime Time was on their world world tour, <laughs> <laughs> and that's whenever y'all evolved into tech, uh, Team Sexy AF, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, where are you at now? Like as far as your career, obviously, you know this year has been crazy. Aside from the the tragedy, yeah. Now, you know, COVID hit. Mm -hmm. We've been in a pandemic. You know, we're still in that right now. Yeah. You're you're now. You're still taking bookings. You're still going out there. You're still yes, doing staying independent busy, shows. busy, yes. <laughs> but now you're a singles competitor. Yeah. You've been a singles competitor before, but yeah. it's different. I'm, readjust I'm readjusting. It's different now. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm doing different. a lot more extra cardio in the ring now because I can't just tag out when I'm getting, <laughs> when I'm getting <laughs> tired, when I'm getting winded. But, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm definitely um, back in the groove of things. Yeah, I got, I got my, I got my uh, swagger back, so I'm good. What are your goals now? Now that you're now that you're moving forward, and you know it's not just about the legacy of Crime Time. It's the legacy of Shad that's that that's riding on you. When people see you, yeah, yeah, they see him, and I know that that's a lot to take on. Yeah, especially when you you have someone that that is revered in terms of the way that yeah. you know. See, I'm, I'm repping for the both of us, so I got to make sure I go out with you know my best foot forward, and um, and that means staying in shape. That means staying on top of my promos, my wrestling skills, perfecting my craft, and um, hopefully taking it to, you know, mm. one of the big boys, you know? What do you want, though? Like, what, what, when you say big boys, do, is that what you <laughs> eventually want? Do you want to go back to one of the big boys? Do you want to grab a strap and, and do it for Shad? I mean, what is it Absolutely. that you want to do? Um, I grew up watching professional wrestling. I'm a, I'm a storyteller, and that's what professional wrestling is. Um, so I would love to do it in front of a main, a big, you know, in front of, on a world scale and, you know, and rep for me and Shad. You called out Cody? Called out Cody numerous times and I've been really petty on social media, but I, <laughs> that's me just expressing my... It's entertainment, baby. Yeah, it's entertainment, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, he, he understands the business. <laughs> so, <laughs> no hard feelings. Me and Cody is hella cool. So I want, I, I want to, I want to wind down. I want you to call out Cody one more time. Call on out Cody one more time. And, and <laughs> let him have it and let him know what time it is. 
my man JTG. Let them know what time it is, man. All right, Cody. It's been a few months now. I done called you out. I've lost count. How many times I called you out? You just it, just ignoring the God. You know what I'm saying? You're ignoring Jay the God. And uh, I'm gonna say it here again. Where you at? Me, you for the TNT Championship title. We need to make this happen. The fans are calling you scared. You know they said that, not me. You know I'm just saying. You know I'm just the messenger. So uh, whatever you ready, just dance. Holler at your boy. I'm here. Yo. <laughs> With that being said, that is my man, JTG. Thank you so much for joining us, man. I wish we could go longer, but I know we... You got to get ready for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Fatal 4 away tomorrow for the VIP heavyweight title. So, yes. Oh, man, I'm going to need my sleep. Going to go hit the gym tomorrow and make sure I am ready to get that title. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank oh, you for man. sharing thank those you stories. Me. You know, we'll, we'll reconnect and we'll, we'll do it again. But I, thank you so much for joining us and, and sharing those stories. I know that it's been a hard few months for you. Uh, but, you know, um, I'm proud of you, man. Thank you, man. I'm appreciate that. I'm proud that. to see you pushing forward. Uh, I, I don't know Shad personally. I know people that know him, but mm -hmm. I know that he wouldn't want it any other way. Keep representing. Keep holding it down, man. You yes, already sir. Know, nothing beats experience. Cheer.